This lesson is called For Loop Fun. In this lesson, we'll use a number line to play a dice game. Each player will roll three times to assign our starting value, our stopping value, and our interval. During each turn, we circle our starting value, then every value that is the same number of steps forward as our interval value. We stop circling when we get to our stopping value. The person with the highest score wins. For loops can come in handy a lot of places. And if you were to become a meteorologist, you'd use for loops all the time. Hi, I'm Becky. I work at Iberdrola Renewables as a wind meteorologist. And so I forecast uh, wind speeds for the Columbia River Gorge area where the company owns wind farms. And so we're trying to understand how much wind is going to be there so that we know how much power is going to be outputted. So we give that information to real-time energy traders and they buy and sell power based upon how much power we tell them is going to be there in order to make sure that the power grid is balanced, your lights stay on, and that we maximize the amount of energy we can get out of these wind farms. We're at the National Control Center for Iberdrola Renewables here in Portland and this is where we have information coming in from all of our wind farms across the country. Even the highest powered computers today can't simulate the atmosphere everywhere. So in computer forecast models we have what we call a grid and each grid point is a latitude and a longitude. We have to calculate um, the physics and try and figure out you know, wind speed, temperature, pressure, that sort of thing. Since these are fairly big grids and we're doing this in a lot of points, we're looping over these things millions and millions of times. For loops, yeah, everything I do, I'll use for loops. Here actually, for example, is a for loop right there. When you're forecasting the wind, there's so many different uh, parameters that go into it, it would be impossible for a human to sit down and do all those calculations. So there's so many different um, aspects to what's going to be affecting what's happening to the wind that we need a computer model in order to forecast it. 